Welcome everyone. My name is Mark Vasquez McKay and I want to share with you today a video on urban sketching. So we're going to talk about the materials that we use and some of the techniques. I'm going to break this video into two parts. Uh, the first part is going to be the materials, uh, what you need to have when you're urban sketching, what's possible, and then the second video is going to be the techniques and potential use. So I'm bringing these videos to you from a new space in downtown Calgary where I've been for about the past five months. So you'll see that the environment's a little bit different than the other videos and certainly a lot more expansive. It's given me the opportunity to work on some larger canvases, but at the same time, um, I'm still doing a lot of drawing because drawing for me is the backbone to, an, to my entire uh, practice. So with me, I brought a few examples. These are some of the different sizes and types of sketchbooks that I work with when I'm urban sketching. Um, and we'll also sort of examine what is urban sketching? When do you urban sketch, etc. Uh, for me, this term urban sketching is, is pretty new. Um, I've always just been drawing all the time wherever I am. So it's nice that there is this umbrella term that we can um, make reference to it. But more or less, it's just drawing wherever you are uh, distinct from landscape drawing. Um, so if you're sitting on a bus, if you're waiting for your food in a restaurant, um, wherever you are, sort of acknowledging your environment, observing it, and studying it through a drawing, uh, which we call urban sketching. So let's take a look at some of the materials that we use. Now the first piece of equipment you're going to need to know about is of course the bag because your bag essentially is like your mobile studio and those of you who know me know that I love my materials therefore I have I think upwards of about eight different bags for any given occasion but this big one is sort of like my main studio so if I'm packing a smaller bag everything comes out of here um, this one came from an army surplus store and it's referred to as a, a field engineers bag so it is great because it's sort of the bring everything, do everything sort of book or bag. Um, but there are certain occasions when maybe you don't want a bag and you're working out of a tiny sketchbook like this one with a little watercolor set and a couple of pens. You know, that can make a lot of sense too, especially if you're going into museums and different places where you don't want to necessarily have a bag or bags are not permitted. So this bag, I'll start to open up for you and then we can sort of look at all the contents that I put inside this. So this one's super fantastic because up here I can have my itinerary whether I'm traveling or I'm teaching a class. Um, I have all my pens in here. I have various inks here. have my watercolors there. And then inside of the actual bag I can carry all the different sizes of sketchbooks that I like to take and my markers. And then the part that I like most about this bag is that it has this back compartment. So in the back here, let me see, I open it up, I unzip it, and it unfolds this whole other section where I get to keep various drawing materials, inks, brushes, sharpeners, knives, all that stuff. I get squeezed the left over here, and it's really accessible easy for me to sort of make decisions on the fly. So believe it or not, all this did come out of my sketching bag. Um, so we have my uh, sketchbooks here. All of these I have in there. So you can see I like to keep sort of various sizes. I have a square format, a small panoramic format, a really long panoramic format, sort of standard panoramic format, and then I keep one that's more designed for dry media. So these are the sketchbooks that generally I like to keep in my book or in my bag. Uh, but again, it can also be circumstantial depending on what sort of sketching that you're going to do. Uh, so for example, if I go on a trip, usually I'll just have one sketchbook that I'll take with me. And I like to sort of design the covers of them. You know, so this one I took to Europe when we went there last year. Um, and we traveled various places. So on the front, I sort of put all the different places that we were going and a little sketch of um, Amsterdam that I did on the street there. Uh, so that's always fun. And then this one, we take groups down to Mexico every year. So 
Uh, this one was when we took a group to Mexico City, which usually we do in September. As you can see, my sketchbooks aren't necessarily just for drawing in, but I also keep sort of all my information with respect to the hotel, the itinerary, what we're doing every day, and then I sort of make it into a fun little visual thing. Other times, um, when we go to Guanajuato, for example, and we're going to spend a bit more time sketching, I'll usually take down a larger format. So this one's a really big format, and it's got the nice gray paper inside of it, so that can be fun to work with also. Uh, so depending on what the situation is, you know, some sketchbooks like the small one are going to be easier. You know, this with the little watercolor set, really easy to slip inside your pocket and, um, and be very mobile with it. So those are the sketchbooks. Now the next most common sort of applications with urban sketching are, are usually going to be these drafting pens and not necessarily Micron. Micron sort of a cheaper version. Um, there are various companies that make them and on the end here you'll see that they have different sizes. So in the next video I will talk about how to use those uh, and some techniques with using them um, and they usually couple very nicely with the watercolor. So the watercolor, for me, I mean, everyone treats watercolor a little bit differently, but for me, watercolor is sort of just simply adding color to something. Uh, whereas other watercolorists, you know, it could be a start to finish application and the paper they work on and everything is, is um, very important to them. Whereas for me, all that I really want is a thick paper. So with these sketchbooks, so here's an example of using the drafting pen with a little bit of watercolor on the end there to get some color. Um, I buy these moleskin books. Generally speaking, I mean, I, it, I'll go with any company, but moleskin, they have a really nice range. And these ones are called Watercolor Plus. So they'll give you a nice heavy paper. So it can take watercolor, it can take ink, it can take a lot of things. But if you do use these alcohol-based inks, it will bleed through a little bit. So be warned of that. Um, so here's an example of the drafting pen with the watercolor. Another example, sometimes, again, with the watercolor, it's not so much about being a watercolorist. Uh, this one I did at the Calgary Stampede, which is sort of our, our local annual fair that we have. Uh, and I just put color in there just to sort of, you know, give it some energy and such. So it wasn't so much about coloring things, but just getting the general palette. And then I did all the drawing with the drafting pen. So that's another example. Uh, these two work really good together. With my watercolors, I have two different sets. So this one's a small little Winsor & Newton one. Again, really good to fit inside your pocket, easy to use. And then this one, I think, is uh, Rowney. Yeah, so Rowney made this one. You have a few more colors to choose from. Both really good sets. It's more just dependent on how big of a unit I can get away with taking um, or what I need. And to work with that, these are really good brushes. So you can get these brushes that water goes inside here. So see, I squeeze it, the water's coming right out. So really easy to work on the go. You don't have to worry about bringing paper or water with you, uh, but you are gonna wanna bring a paper towel just to sort of clean your brush off or some of these sets have an actual sponge built into them. You know, something like that can work really good. And again, I've taken these right into the museum. So, you know, I'll have this, and this, maybe one pen, and my little sketchbook, really mobile, easy to move around with. <clears throat> so watercolor, drafting pens. Next we have my inks. I love to work with ink. Um, there's different ways that you can use it. First I'm going to introduce you to these pens. These pens are pretty neat. You can get black or sepia, and the ink's already in there. Now what's unique about this ink is that it's not permanent ink. So once you put it on the paper, you can move it around a whole bunch and you can experiment and play with different ways of using it. Uh, and you can couple it with the drafting pen. So for example, this drawing, you know, I sort of just threw down some of that ink and roughed in all my shadows and such. And then I used the drafting pen to clean it up and to refine some of my form. So that's one way that you can use it. Um, and, and again, they're really nice because you can move it around. Um, I, I also find that with organic subjects, it can be really useful. So this 
is uh, I did sort of sitting on a bench in the city park and I used the red one and you can use it with the water and move it around so you can sort of get your dark area and then use the water brush and bring it all over the place and and get a little bit bit of a value range so that's that um, next we have actual sort of traditional ink now I like to use these nibs and you can see here I have various sizes of nibs depending on how thick or thin of a line that I want and they come off of these <laughs> this one's on there pretty good but they come off and you have your handle like this um, and you will dip this into an inkwell I know it's a little nerve-wracking having this much ink with you uh, for that reason I do like the glass containers versus the plastic ones I'm worried that those will um, you know bust open um, yeah so you dip it in there and then you can get a nice thin line out of that you can also use this and create a little bit of a wash so you can get a range of, um, of values so something like that in my little sketchbook here I did the Calgary Tower so you can see I was using this I like the the nib because it can also give you a bit of a clumsy line so it's not super perfect right it's very inconsistent and that can look a little bit better than the drafting pens the drafting pens are good but they're going to give you a lot of consistency whereas this can be a bit more playful and then you can use the same color for the wash um, I also periodically use chopsticks you know chopsticks can be interesting um, again to get a super irregular line so an example of that you know here's a bunch of boxes that I drew uh, and then I filled in with watercolor but you can see how clumsy that line is so considerably more clumsy than the nib um, and more playful so again it depends on the subject because these were boxes that were sort of getting ready to be thrown out or recycled um, they were sort of beaten up and I want to show some of that that surface quality next we have markers now I have this sort of cheap set of markers of course the most common brand that most people like are the Copic markers um, Copic markers are quite expensive um, there are a lot of aftermarket markers that you can get alcohol based right so you have the two different sides you have the the sharp and then the brush tip so I find there's a lot of companies that are making these uh, if you do a little bit of research you'll find some good alternatives to Copic and save about half the money so they're they're good with architecture you know if you want to get in sort of directional lines or if you're doing siding on a building or bricks or something that can be uh, a, a good material to describe the surface quality <clears throat> also uh, they usually come with these uh, grays so the grays are really really good for getting your shadows so the first example the drawing that I showed um, with uh, Guanajuato it um, I used one of these markers so like a warm gray to get all my shadows in so they can couple very nicely with your drafting pens or like I said there I have various after like uh, alternative markers that aren't Copic that I use for that uh, some some brands I think it's you know I stick with them because they have the best quality whereas I find with those markers not that much of a, a, a difference between the cheaper ones and the expensive ones so markers next over here um, I have both gesso and I have clear acrylic the clear acrylic I had to transfer into this container because when I buy it it's used by the gallon and I use this for collaging so when I'm urban sketching um, usually I'm sort of picking up different things in the environment be it a napkin um, you know a, a label from a coffee cup something like that and I'll incorporate it into my drawings so I use this as an adhesive so it's a gloss it's a golden product this is a good example I stick with golden with anything that's water-based um, because the Liquitex and those other companies they're they're not nearly as good whereas golden pretty much has things figured out so an example of, of when I'm collaging this one I did when we went down to Mexico last Christmas and so I was collaging these sort of tissue papers different pieces of paper to sort of give a little bit of a sense of, of structure and then here some of the uh, flowers that were on the ground there I, I put the actual flower inside the drawing um, and I should note at this time too this is a really interesting sketchbook 
It's made by Moleskin, and it's, I think they call it a Japanese accordion book. And so all the pages are actually attached. And so every day I would do a different drawing, and it sort of gives you the entire experience of your trip that, it, that you can, you know, keep between two pa or uh, two covers. And also with this, you have to recognize that um, you need to sort of consider the previous page in order to have the whole thing work at the same time. So again, really interesting, different format. This is a Moleskin product and a lot of my collaging works in there also. <coughs> and the gesso, the gesso I use more or less sort of as a whiteout. So if I'm drawing something with watercolor or ink, and we know that's a pretty permanent application, <coughs> I can use the gesso to, um, to white it out and to clean it up a little bit. So I have those two, and then a little bit of little brush um, to, to apply those with. Next I have my knives. Um, the exacto knife is really good again for collaging so I can get that precision uh, whereas this one usually I'm using to sharpen my pencils and what have you. A um, little bit of sandpaper for keeping everything sharp right so I can get those nice edges that I want. Graphite pencils, drafting pencils with various lead sizes and a precision eraser because sometimes I do like to get in there and get super super precise with my drawings. Um, and then I have charcoal. Usually we don't use charcoal too much just because with urban sketching you do um, You generally are drawing sort of structural things Therefore the ink is a little bit more conducive to the subject matter, but there are times when I like to use a dry material um, And over here I keep my China marker and then I have this oil-based charcoal um, pencil which is really interesting because it sort of has a little bit of a drag to it. And then here I have Conte pencils. Again, all these are sort of on the drier end of the spectrum. But again, there there is circumstances, you know, for example, here I did a little church in downtown Calgary, the Center Street Church, and I used uh, one of my Conte pencils for this one. So sometimes I do like that material, or if there's some greenery and such in the background, you know, it'll be nice to, to have a dry material to mix it all in with. And then finally, we have the Conte. So it's the same as this, right? Except it's the entire stick. And then I have a whole range of colors to go with that. Not using these too, too much, um, but it is nice to have for any given circumstance. So you can see with all my materials, generally speaking, I always have something that I can use, you know, get some precision with so I can have a tip and then other things where I can get some mass, right? So this. I can get precision, this I can get mass, right? So shadows, information, detail, right? Information, shadows, right? So I'm always going back and forth between something that gives a big piece of application and something that gives a more sort of small detailed piece of information. So thank you for joining me. Like I said, there's gonna be a second part to this video where I'm gonna go through all these materials and I'm gonna do demos with them. Um, and give a few tricks on sort of how you use them. Uh, so if you are interested, tune in for that one. And thank you for joining.